the sack where I said sweet I and mean, yes. See, so well thank you very much for the invitation, Horacio. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, the statistical associating field theory and its applications. This is well known as SAFT. This is a methodology that uh, it has around uh, 25 years uh, since it was uh, no, 20, almost 30 years, I would say, 25 years that it was uh, proposed. And what we are going to see here, and that's my my main interest, is that you can you can see what we ha what uh, has been done in SAFT here in Mexico. Okay, in, in particular, in, in my group, in, in the statistical mechanics group, the group I which I belong. Okay, so I I am using this image of Saturn because Saturn is an important planet, no, for several reasons. But in physics, and particularly in statistical physics, uh, it has a very important role. And uh, we are going to see in my talk uh, why. Okay? So, if we talk about uh, associating interactions, so the first question could be well, what do we mean by uh, associating behavior? Well, associating behavior basically arises in nature through hydrogen bonding. That's not the only way of having associative interactions, but hydrogen bonding is a very important uh, associative interaction. Hydrogen bonding, as we know, is a particular uh, interaction that arises by the way that a molecule is formed, and it's an interaction that is a weak interaction in relation to other interactions, but it's a very important interaction because it has noticeable effects. So, for example, in the case of water, as we know, water forms hydrogen bonds. Uh, the presence of the hydrogen bonds explains to us why uh, uh, ice, the solid phase of water, is, uh, is a phase with a lower density than the liquid phase. In normal, well, not, not in normal, but in other substances, the, the, the common rule is that uh, the solid has a higher density than the liquid phase. Whereas in water, that doesn't happen. And so, the reason is because of the hydrogen bonding. We have this, uh, this is a, a figure that depicts the structure of water. We have oxygen, we have hydrogen, we have a dipolar moment. Uh, but since hydrogen forms a covalent bond with oxygen, uh, we can say that the the positive nucleus of, of the hydrogen uh, doesn't have more electrons that cover up you know, the, the positive charge. And that's why this positive charge is very keen to interact with the electrons from other oxygens. In a, sorry, from the oxygens, the, the electrons oxygen, uh, the electrons are the, are the other molecule, the other water molecule. And this is a weak interaction. In the sense that uh, it's a very directional interaction, it doesn't arise in at any direction. You can see it here. These are some uh, figures, snapshots of computer simulations that show this effect. You, you have here the, the water molecules, and you can see how, the, for a specific interactions, that more or less have a, a, a geometry, a tetrahedral uh, geometry. You can see the observation of clusters of the structuration of water. If you have higher densities, uh, then you can see clearly here that by the, the formation of the hydrogen bonds, then you have these structures where you have these empty spaces. And that's the reason why ice has a lower density than water, because the presence of these cavities that reduce the density with respect to the liquid phase. And that's why uh, the ice uh, doesn't sink into the liquid phase. Okay? So, when we talk about associating behavior, 
uh, as I have mentioned before, we have to compare this interaction with other interactions. We can talk about the covalent bond, that is a very strong uh, bonding between molecules. And also we have another kind of interactions like the dispersion or van der Waals forces. So let me try to introduce this in order to appreciate the role of, of, of hydrogen bonding and associated interactions. So we have to go back to, to Maxwell, who is very famous by his distribution function of velocities of a uh, system of, of gas particles. And uh, he was very interested in on the understanding the interaction between particles. So he has a clear idea that particles must have a repulsive interaction in order to explain the behavior, the microscopic behavior of, of, of particles. And actually, uh, he proposed a, an interaction that if you write in terms of the pair potential, then this interaction goes like 1 over r to the p. And actually, he he was able to give a measure of P by measuring properties of, of viscosity of water. So for Maxwell, it was clear that the role of, of the microscopical properties was clearly related to the nature of the forces. And uh, the, the role that this distribution played in the history of statistical physics was very important because it was the first time that a uh, statistical method was used to explain the behavior of molecules. Although it was not the first time that the statistical method was used to explain uh, other kinds of physics. And actually it was Maxwell uh, who used this first for, for the first time in a general sense, the, the use of a distribution function to explain properties of a physical system. And he did it with the rings of Saturn. He was working this idea of how uh, we can explain the, the structure of the rings and the stability of the rings. There was a problem that several physicists uh, have in mind and trying to explain. Where the most famous was Laplace. And Laplace was thinking that the, the rings were made of a continuous solid. But then, if you apply elasticity theory, what happens is that the propagation of waves within these rings will destroy the rings. And uh, by observation, we know that the rings are very stable. So the, uh, the, the solution to this problem was given by Maxwell, because Maxwell uh, 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 used it as a hypothesis that the rings were, were not a continuous media, but they were, that the rings were formed by uh, small particles. That the rings, in, in modern language, we, we, we can say it's a granular media. And then he was able to demonstrate that if this was a granular media, the rings could be stable. And actually, both papers, both articles, the article about the rings and the articles about the distribution of velocities are of the same time. And it's because both works were, are, are very similar. So it's clear that uh, Maxwell was using the same kind of reasoning, and the, of the, same, the same kind of argument, to explain both phenomena. And, uh, Okay, so well, this is just a uh, little, you know, variation. Uh, in, in 2009, we were informed that Saturn has a, 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 a largest ring. It's a very big ring. No, it's about, uh, in terms of the radius of Saturn, it's a ring that extends from uh, 128 RS to 200 RS. Well, it's, more, it's more like a donut, actually. And, uh, okay. The other scientist that enters in this discussion about forces is Boltzmann, who was able to show by statistical methods a general way to derive a distribution function. This F is, is the equivalent of the distribution function that Maxwell used. Now that the difference is that Boltzmann proposed an equation from uh, fundamental physics, from using the, the physics of binary collisions, to explain how this function could change in time. No? 
and basically he was able to introduce all the information about collisions using a pair potential. And what he, what he found is that basically the exponent of, the, of this pair interaction actually is much bigger than 4, much bigger than 1. You know? So he was able to show that by considering basically uh, half spheres, it was possible to derive a very important theorem that is called the H theorem. That if you construct this function in terms of f, f log, uh, log f, and integrated in the, integrated in the uh, phase space, then this function decreases with the time. And from this, he did a connection with entropy because he, he proposed that when you reach equilibrium, then the entropy must be the negative of h. This is the, the, the Boltzmann constant. And in that way, you can recover the second law of thermodynamics. This was a very polemic work because a lot of people didn't want it, didn't like it. Uh, particularly Planck was not happy with this result because Planck say uh, the, the main uh, criticism by Planck was well if you are using probability to explain the second law then you are saying that the second law can ha uh, could have exceptions and no the second law is an absolute law and that was a big discussion between them and that actually that is the reason why uh, Planck. Uh, goes to, to work on the problem of the radiation and interaction of radiation and matter. Uh, he wanted to demonstrate that the key element that was lost in the demonstration of Maxwell, was the, sorry, of Boltzmann, was the electromagnetic field. And so that's why he went for a problem, a complete problem, with collisions, with uh, heat, with, uh, uh, well, yeah, I, I, with thermodynamics, and with the presence of electromagnetic fields, and that was the problem with the black body radiation problem. Well, anyway, uh, Boltzmann was able not, not only to show that it was possible to give a, a justification of the second law from uh, basic uh, principles, but also he, he was able to demonstrate that uh, the distribution of, of velocities given by Maxwell can be recovered according to this formalism. What is interesting is that just a couple of years ago, you know, 2010, uh, there was a presentation of uh, what is called a global classical solution to the Boltzmann equation because the, the, the question is if this exponent is not very big, if you are not considering hard spheres, <coughs> does all these results is still are valid? And the answer given by these mathematicians was yes. 2010, they could these results and they showed <coughs> very interesting results. They, they actually were able to show that for any exponent that is greater than 2, all the results that uh, Boltzmann derived is still are valid. Okay? So this is a very interesting paper that tells us that actually. The application of the Boltzmann reasoning is actually very general. Now, what about attractive interactions? What about uh, the interactions that justify or, or explain to us the formation of water, or, sorry, of liquids? Because we can have a gas and we can explain the dynamics of a gas by repulsive interactions. But at some moment, the molecules of the liquid have to, to uh, attract each other and to form uh, drops and then to have a liquid phase. Well, the idea of having attractive interactions is also very old. It goes back to Newton. Newton was one of the first to give an explanation of the phenomena that we know now as absorption. How, how is the interaction between a surface and a particle? But the, 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 the interesting chapter of science here is given by Laplace and Thomas Jung. Laplace was able to give a derivation uh, about the, the force that acts between two walls, two surfaces. And he was able to give an expression that now in, 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 in modern language can be written in terms of the pain interaction between molecules and is related to uh, thermodynamic properties, the variation of the thermal energy with the volume when you fix the temperature. What's interesting is that Thomas Jung, 
was also able to work, and Thomas Jung was not doing properly mathematical physics in this, in, in this work. He was using what we know now as dimensional analysis. He was able to show that the surface tension has dimensions uh, in relation to this uh, K in such a way that if you give the ratio between the surface tension and this energy per, per volume, then you get a quantity that has dimensions of, uh, of space, of longitude. Okay? And the interesting thing here is that he applied this scaling for water and then he interprets his result. He obtained it as a result, one action, actually, but of the order of actions. In a time that, uh, you know, action uh, still didn't exist in the, in the nomenclature, no? We are talking about uh, a, a very tiny fraction of, of, meet, of a meter, okay? But he was able to obtain this result, and then what is very interesting is the explanation that Thomas Jung did. Thomas Jung uh, 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 explained this result saying, well, this must be a measure of the range of the attractive force between water molecules. And this explanation is right, because we know now that the range of the attractive interactions is in actions. When we talk about Van der Waals forces, isotropic attractive forces that explain the formation of a, of a liquid phase. Well, Thomas is very well known by several results. Obviously, pneumotics is very well known by his uh, his experiments on the nature, the very nature of, of light. Uh, he's also, he was a physician, okay? So he, he worked on the, on the, he did studies on the working of the eye, and actually he, he was the, the one that coined the term of crystalline, uh, sorry, of um, astigmatism, this problem, optical problem. He was the first to, to use this and to explain it in terms of the working of, of the eye. He is very well known also by the deciphering the, the, the uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Uh, okay, so what about this attractive interaction? Well, okay, June was able to say the range is very small, so that means it's very short, so that means that atoms must be very, very, very tiny particles. And uh, Van der Waals was the next in this series of results because he was able to demonstrate that it was possible to, gener to generalize the equation of state of the ideal gas equation of state to another equation of state that could describe the formation of a liquid and the liquid vapor transition. And he used as a main idea a kind of pay potential that we know now that is the Jukawa potential, although Van der Waals was the first to use it, but the, for some reasons the Jukawa the name of Jukawa that came after <coughs> the, the modeling of the interaction between, uh, between the proton and the neutron in 1943 uh, by Jukawa that was the first to propose how this works. Well, uh, anyway, and the was using this basically, basically the same kind of, of interaction to explain the, the attractive interactions using basically the results given by, by Thomas Jung. And he proposed this, this, the alpha, the, the, Van der Waals used two constants, one related to the, to the excluded volume for the particles, the repulsive interactions, and another related to the attractive interactions, that actually is the same kind of parameter that Laplace uses between two planar uh, surfaces, okay? And uh, he obtained his famous equation of state. Nevertheless, Boltzmann was agreed with it. He, 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 he liked the, the Van der Waals model, but he, uh, and this is a, a very interesting result that he presents in his book, uh, Theory of Gases, where he says, well, everything is right with Van der Waals with the exception of the range of attractive forces. Because actually, in order that the, the equation could work, the range must be greater, it must be of long range order. Van der Waals was not, uh, was not happy with the results, and actually in the book, uh, Boltzmann said, well, everything that I am saying here about the Van der Waals equation, Van der Waals doesn't agree with me, okay? Uh, and later, almost 100 years later, actually it was 90 years later, uh, these three scientists were able to demonstrate that actually both 
were right. Because they were able to show that in order to recover the Van der Waals equation from statistical physics, what you have to do is to have a long range, as Boltzmann mentioned it, but the depth, the energy depth of the interaction must be very small, very, very small, in such a way that the Van der Waals interaction is a perturbation of the repulsive interaction. Okay, so we enter now here to the realm of perturbation theory in the statistical physics. This has a long story, but basically we can resume this story saying that from 1950 to 1970s, more or less, 1950 to 1970s, uh, it was possible to have a general perturbation theory for liquids that was working very well for simple liquids, not very complicated molecules. But uh, if you are considering, for example, uh, noble uh, gases or small molecules, then you can describe very well the, the properties of these uh, substances as a liquid phase using a perturbation theory where basically you take as a perturbation of the repulsive interaction, you take the attractive interaction as a perturbation. Okay. But associative interactions cannot be explained according to this frame, this frame of perturbation theories. The first person to talk about associative interactions was Boltzmann, in the same book, Lectures in Gas Theory, where he considered that it was possible to model associative interactions and isotropic interactions in terms of small regions. These are two atoms. And so he was considered that it was, uh, if we consider two small regions that could overlap, then you could have some kind of an isotropic interaction. In this case, he was thinking more in uh, dissociation. How do you break, for example, a chemical compound? Basically, he was thinking on that. He was not thinking on hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding came later. But the mechanism that he proposed was possible to model uh, until you know, these years, you know, several years after the, the foundation of statistical mechanics and uh, quantum mechanics. And, uh, it was possible to have an accurate way of modeling different kinds of fluids formed by different molecules. Molecules that could have long shape, uh, anisotropic shapes, could have associative interactions. And this, one, this was done by a mathematician, Michael Werkheim, that uh, he developed a rigorous theory, mathematical theory, to work out the properties of liquids in terms of these anisotropic forces, associating forces. Of course, for this time, perturbation theories for isotropic forces were very well established. But, and people working in liquid state theory was aware that these kind of theories couldn't work could not give uh, accurate results for these other kind of fluids. Okay? Another problem that arise in, in liquid state theory was that it was not possible to develop uh, accurate equation states for long chain molecules. Okay? So, Michael Werkheim was able to show that using the same kind of methods, uh, at the same time, we could resolve the problem of the anisotropy an isotropy of molecules and also the associative interactions. And that's, that's a very important result. That was used by a multidisciplinary uh, team, uh, chemical engineers, uh, chemists, that were able to use all the ideas of Wareheim and to construct an equation state based on these ideas. And this is what is called the statistical associative fluid theory. The, the idea of using sites to model uh, hydrogen bonding and to work out interactions, uh, so anisotropic molecules, and including the Van der Waals interactions, all was uh, possible to put in an equation state for the free energy in terms of different terms. Uh, I'm not going to go at this moment but the, the nature of these terms. This has been a very successful article and it has been used for a, a very uh, wide range of, of substances. And uh, this has been a very successful approach. 
uh, there are now a whole Congress devoted to 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 give you know the advances on SAF. Actually, this this was not the last one. The last one of Europe this happened this year in Portugal, 2004. This was in Spain, and uh, the story of SAF is that it was proposed in 1989, and then uh, some years later came two different ways of extending this original theory. The theory, the original theory was a theory that was very successful, but at the same time it has several limitations. And these two approaches were able to extend the, the, the accuracy of the theory. Uh, I worked on this, uh, it was with Professor Jackson, that was one of the original uh, scientists working on SAFT. Uh, during my postdoc in, in Sheffield, I worked with this version of extending the range of application of, of SAF DR and also to, to use more robust ways of calculating perturbation terms and what was very important also to make an equation state valid for mixtures because usually the, the equation states that come from statistical mechanics to the realm of chemical engineering are equation states that are very sophisticated, very accurate, very accurate, sorry, but that works only for pure components. And the real world of the chemical engineers are mixtures. So one of the key components of this theory is that could work for mixtures. And this theory has had several developments. One of the most successful now is this one that works with a different way of reasoning the interactions. Uh, it was developed now in, 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 at Imperial College in London. And there's this other equation state that uh, is very successful. This was developed in Germany. It's a variation of SAFT. And actually, it is, from the point of view of the industrial applications, is the equation the state that is most used in the, in now in, in the literature. Uh, SAFT also is used uh, in industrial applications. This uh, was done by the team at Imperial College. They, they were able to, 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 to to develop, you know, a, a general software that now is included in, in this company, ESE. And now if you go to this company and you put in, if you put in, in Google G prompts, you are going to see that one of the windows is GSAF, and in that window they explain basically basically uh, how this SAFIR modeling works. And that now that's used for several applications. No? Uh, so let me talk, let me now, in this second part of the talk, let me give you a, pres a, a presentation of how this SAFVR formalism has been used here in Mexico for different kinds of problems. This problem arises in different, different ways. Uh, the first problem that we were able to, to tackle was the, the modeling of fluids using discrete potentials. My colleague, Ana Laura Benavides, here. Uh, at the Institute of Physics, she was working on this problem. And so when he arrived from, from England, he was interested to, to, to understand better these kind of models. And with all the experience that at that moment I, I had carried with uh, extending SAF, then uh, we work in a theory that actually she has been able to, to give several examples of the use of these discrete potential models in different contexts. And uh, I have been more focused in the use of uh, discrete potentials for chain molecules for different substances. The other problem was asphaltine, asphaltine precipitation. Uh, researchers at the Institute of Mexican Petroleum, they wanted to use SAFT in the model of asphaltine precipitation. It was a work that was the thesis of Eduardo Mendrostro, that now he works at the Imperial College, I'm uh, sorry, at the, at the IMP. And uh, we worked, uh, and we are we're still working, I am doing job here the, the years of the publication, but we are still working on this problem. Uh, with the people in England, we continue working with the problem now of charged fluids, and to develop a question state for charged fluids, and we are still doing work. Uh, the other problem was absorption. So this was something that uh, uh, several students from what was now, what, sorry, what was IFUG, uh, the work of this, uh, in, in this subject, and also we have here a collaboration with people from Vanderbilt University, uh, Vanderbilt University in the United States that were interested in this problem. Uh, the problem of biodiesel was 
a product was suggested to us by chemical engineers from Colombia, the group of uh, Professor Carlos Ariel Cardona. They were interested in, in they, they are experts in, in using biofuels. In, they are uh, experts, uh, worldwide experts in, in the use of biofuels. Uh, but they, wa they were interested in the, in the molecular model. And so we started a, a small project on this idea, and, and uh, one of his students came to, to do his, to, to work his PhD here in, in E4, uh, working on this subject. And Felipe uh, Saldono, that he finished in 2011. And we are continuing working this uh, area of biofuels. And uh, we are we are collaborating with Carlos Ariel. Now one of our students is, is going back now. Uh, Carlos Ariel sent to us two excellent Colombian students to work with us. Uh, and now we wanted to, to, to thank you. And now another student from, from us is coming to work with him. And the other work in which we have been involved is in the introduction of quantum corrections to model, for example, hydrogen. Hydrogen under confinement, for example. And the idea, as I have mentioned, is that you can construct different kinds of molecules using this theory. You can use different kinds of, of uh, interactions. And you can model very complicated substances and, and their mixtures. So this is more or less like a mechanic. Because you have the ingredients. You, have, you know how to, you know, to, to link and to bond the pieces in order to do different kinds of arrangements. It's like an, an, a level. And it's what we do. If we want, for example, to develop a model for a biofuel, then we, we have to know the structure, the molecular structure of the biofuel, and then we have to model the different kind of structures and to know how the different interactions are going to be modeled in these substances. So it's a working of, of years, more or less. Uh, these are two, a couple of years, uh, and the idea is to model in the same way, the evolving of, of molecules. I am, I am putting this example of GIRS because uh, Joshua Gibbs was, is one of the founders of the statistical mechanics. Uh, he was a mechanical engineer, and his thesis was about this, the how to improve uh, this GIRS mechanism. Okay? And later he, he traveled to Europe, and he was very interested on, on thermodynamics. But he was a mechanical engineer. Okay. And maybe these ideas of statistical mechanics that we learn now in, at school from Gibbs are not very far from this idea of considering you know, some kind of gears and some kind of small motors. Okay, uh, okay so in general, the, the, the formalists of the Savier formalists has contributions to the free energy coming from different kinds of interactions. This is the, the low density term that is very well known, the ideal term. Then we, you have the contributions between the monomers that interact. Then you have the bonding, but not the bonding arising from uh, hydrogen bonding, but the, the, the covalent bonding, basically. This takes into account here. And also you have the associating interaction. We have worked different kinds of pair potentials to model this. Uh, but most of the results that I want to present here are based with the idea of using square wells interaction. And uh, you have different expressions for this for this term. This is the ideal contribution that in an elementary course of statistical physics is derived. The monomers interaction is basically given in terms of how many monomers I have if we consider that the chain molecules, for example, is formed by several monomers. Then if we know how to how to work the, the equation state of the free energy of a, of a fluid of monomers, then we can work this contribution. This can be done by standard perturbation theory. This is the free energy of the repulsive interaction, the hard series. And then you have different contributions, perturbation terms, and the perturbation parameter is the inverse of temperature. We have here the bonding, uh, the covalent bonding, that can be written in terms of a structural function that is related to the radial distribution function. And uh, I would say that the most important contribution of the SAFI R was able to give a very short, a very compact expression for the first perturbation term that can be given in a very short uh, 
pension, no? You do not, do not, do not need a, a very you know, uh, long expression. Because most of the expressions that you can find in literature for A1 are very cumbersome expressions. And one of the merits of the Sapi was able to give short expressions that were able to work for mixtures. Uh, we use also some fundamental theorems coming from statistical physics to relate properties of the structure. These kind of relations that are hidden you know, in the books of statistical physics, for example, the Landau, was very useful you know, to simplify the expressions. So uh, when one is working with chemists and chemical engineers, usually it's like a joke, like, well, what do physicists do? And what is the, have the application of physics? Well, uh, this is a joke because when we use this expression, the, the, some of my colleagues were asking me, well, that expression where does it come from? Well, that's why you need physicists in the world, because we know where those terms are. And what we did was then, by this spirit of mechano, to, to work on different kinds of problems, asphalt things, hydrogen, and biocombustible, bio, uh, diesel. In the case of precipitation of asphalt things, this was a problem that was of interest in the petroleum industry. This is, a, this is coming from the laboratory where Eduardo Del Nostro works. And this is a cut you know, of a, a, a dot that conducts oil. Uh, Carlos Lira uh, was the other colleague from, from the Institute of Petroleum that uh, has a lot of experience on this kind of, of problems. And the problem is that when you have oil, there are some precipitates that uh, absorb on the, on the walls of, the, of this tube, and then you have a reduction of the diameter of the volume of conduction of a tube like this solid precipitate. These asphalt things, the structures are very complicated. So one of the works that we did here, it was a piece of thesis from from Guanajuato, that we worked was to model by computer simulation uh, the, the asphalt things with a very simplistic model. So this is some kind of work that I do also that to work uh, Monte Carlo simulations of different kinds of systems. And we worked in this to have an idea of the formation of these kind of structures that could explain the precipitation or the aggregation of asphalt things. And the thermodynamic model that Eduardo and I used to explain the precipitation was considered that if you have this stack you know, of, of different disks, each disk represents a asphalt molecule, then you can represent that as a sphere and to induce precipitation. We know that these asphalt things have uh, forms hydrogen bonding, and then we introduce some uh, uh, interacting in, in associ associating the, the sites. And in that way, you can model the precipitation by a liquid-liquid equilibrium, where the liquid with at, high, uh, at the highest density corresponds to the precipitate. And in that way, you can give an equation, uh, sorry, a phase diagram, pressure against temperature, uh, where you can indicate under which thermal conditions you are going to have precipitation of asphalt in Sasa as a solid or as a very uh, uh, heavy liquid. And uh, Eduardo did a, he did a very, a very uh, good work because he went to, to the production wells in, in the, the Gulf of Mexico to measure the precipitation. So actually, the results here are compared with real conditions of production. And we were able to show that uh, we could give a very good prediction of precipitation. Uh, well, Eduardo is still working on this, and uh, he now uh, he received a, uh, an award from, from the kind of work that he's doing with, with asphalt things two years ago. And, uh, and the other work that we did with him was not to explain the absorption of asphalt things within rocks. Uh, this is a problem of confined fluids, and uh, the statistical mechanics of confined fluids is still. Uh, you have to work it and you have to elaborate it and it's not finished. And we work at the, with the same model that we used before for both phases. Now we use it for, for different kind of 
quarter drops. And we were able to give very, uh, a very good uh, description of this isotherms. This is concentration within the pores against concentration in the bulk. Uh, and this was part of a PhD thesis of Martin Castro that he did his PhD here at the Fug. Uh, his, his thesis was also useful to explain all kinds of absorption, for example, mixtures, absorption of methane and carbon dioxide uh, mixtures, and the theory works very well. Once that you have the description of molecules in the bulk phase, you can use it this for absorption. Now, what about biofuels? As I mentioned before, Carlos Aguilar Cardona at, uh, at Colombia was very interested in this, this problem, and so Felipe came to work his PhD uh, modeling biofuels using Safiat. So the idea here is that the standard way of producing biodiesel is that you have uh, a process by which, for example, you have triglycerides and then uh, by reaction with an alcohol, then you produce the biodiesel and you produce diesel. So for example, this is a snapshot of the experiments that Felipe did here at the DC to uh, produce biodiesel and then you have here the formation of the biodiesel and the diesel. Uh, these molecules are very complicated molecules, so the, the challenge of the task was if Safia was possible to use for this kind of model. Nobody in the world had worked at biofuels with this model. We were looking at the literature, we asked if, for example, the people in Germany using PC Saf have used it. Or, for example, in, in, in England and in Spain, and uh, actually nobody had experience of working this, so we decided to do it, uh, more or less working. It was similar with asphaltines in some respects because only one group in the United States had worked with asphaltines using SAF. So, but finally, uh, Felipe worked very hard and he was able to give a very really good uh, uh, work. Uh, basically, the idea is that instead, instead of using this kind of reaction, because it's a complication to, to model this kind of, of substances, we simplify, uh, there is another way for producing a biodiesel that you have the, the reaction of the fatty acid with an alcohol and then you produce the biodiesel and you produce water. These kind of, of reactions are, are reactions that, that can be used with cooking waste. So for example, you are recycling here uh, oil. Uh, biofuels, there, there is a confusion. To use biofuels, biofuels is not a green technology. Biofuels also contaminate. Yeah? So people think that because it's bio, then it doesn't pollute. No, but that's not true. Yeah? That's not right. There is contamination with biofuels. But anyway, one of the things that you can try to do is to, to recycle right? the, the formation of the recycle, sorry, the, the formation of, of, of diesels. And then we work at that. Uh, and uh, we have to model these substances. There are standard models for SAF models for methanol, so that was not a problem. There are also standard models for water, but our problem was to model these other two substances. So that was part of the work that we had to do and to characterize these substances using SAF -VR. But finally, we were able to give uh, phase agents like this one. Actually, we are talking about four components because we are talking about fatty acid, the alcohol, the biodiesel, and water. In this diagram, I am just showing the fatty, sorry, the, the, the fatty acid, the, the biodiesel, and the alcohol. Water will be no, uh, out of the plane, okay? So uh, I am not showing water. And these are uh, measurements done for this process of equilibration, and this is the prediction of the theory. So in general, it works very well. Somebody can ask, well, why do you, you don't have uh, measurements here? Well, the problem is that to, uh, the problem is here is with water and methanol that these uh, concentrations were obtained because these are concentrated, the, the, the axis relate to concentration. And so the problem with these uh, concentrations is that uh, for these 
for this zone, we have some measurements, but the, the uncertainty was so big that actually we were not sure that they were right. So this is more an experimental problem, but it, it doesn't matter. If you have a theory that works very well in a whole range, then these kind of theories are very useful because they can give you an idea of how the behavior is going to be in the region where you cannot do experiments, or experiments are very expensive, or experiments are very dangerous. So that's one, one of the reasons why the SAFT approach has been very uh, popular for industrial usage, because it can reduce uh, uh, problems. Okay? The, other, the other study that we did was the behavior of the heat capacity as a function of temperature. And this theory can, can tell you uh, which is the best mixture, because actually when we talk about a biodiesel, a bio uh, we are talking about a, co a combination or a mixture of different biodiesels. So this corresponds to the heat capacity of a ternary, ternary mixture. We are using three different biodiesels. And then what you can do is to find the optimum mixture in such a way that you have the highest optimum value of the heat capacity. So you can, with that theory, you can work out which is the right composition of the mixture. And these kind of results are also are very useful in the, for example, in the design of a, of a motor. Felipe, after finishing his PhD here, he, he moved to, to Cefa Tauna and he continued his work on, on biofuels. And one of the ideas that he had when he finished his PhD is to, uh, to, to go directly to the people that design motors uh, with working with biofuels and to see if it was possible to, to connect all of them. Felipe is now in Colombia. He has finished his uh, postdoc. And uh, he's working now in a research center on this kind of ideas. The last, the, the last subject that I'm going to mention here very, very quickly is hydrogen. Uh, as you know, hydrogen, uh, the, the, the use of hydrogen has changed along the centuries. The last century it was used to, model, to, to move uh, zeppelins, and it was dangerous. But now uh, there are the cars that are designed uh, with hydrogen. And so the problem is how to uh, storage and transport hydrogen. This is one of the key issues of, of, of the hydrogen economy. And one of the interests is that maybe it's possible to use graphene to, to develop uh, cells, batteries, using hydrogen. You need liquid hydrogen. So. One of the key questions here is what, what are the best equation states for liquid hydrogen? And one of our surprise when we started to work with this is that most of the equations used in uh, the literature and for industrial applications are classical equation states. So the, quant the quantum nature of hydrogen is not taken into account. With the exception of one equation, uh, basically, uh, the, the quantum nature is, has not been studied in this kind of systems. And since we are talking about hydrogen in confinement, uh, so no bulk hydrogen, but hydrogen under confinement, so our interest was to understand the, the, the effect, the quantum effects of these systems. And what we found is that quantum effects are important. Uh, well, this is a slide just to show you that, uh, for example, the United States, the Department of Energy, has a general calendar uh, of a transition to hydrogen economy, they are thinking that at some moment you are going to use hydrogen for different kinds of applications. And of course, this is a, a proposal. Uh, who knows? Some of them maybe where everybody is using hydrogen cars. Who knows? But the world, sorry, this is like a little, you know, it, 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 it requires, uh, it's not, it's an old uh, slide. Victor has finished in last August his thesis, and Mario has finished already his bachelor degree. But basically, what we, what we did was to extend the sub formalism, including quantum effects. So we have to review all the perturbation theories for quantum fluids, and then to include quantum corrections to the standard perturbation terms that are used in classical fluids. This can be done. Uh, most of the work done on this kind of approach uh, were done in the 70s in the gas phase, not in the liquid phase. 
So one of the problems that we had was to to come to to be sure that our expressions were right. So we have to do a lot of computer simulation of quantum systems in order to have the understanding of these effects. Uh, but for example, one of the things that we can do with this SAFIAR modeling is that we can model the absorption of hazard on graphene. These are uh, absorption isotherms. This is the amount of absorption in, in a surface of graphene. And this is the pressure. And basically, we can find the right parameters to represent these uh, experimental results. Uh, we have a comparison between the classical and the quantum versions of the SAFIR. And what you find is that at high pressures, there are important differences between the, few, the two approaches. These are snapshots of a computer simulation that Victor did, uh, not with the square wells, but with Bernard Jones. And, uh, and now the other kind of approach that we are using is that we want to simulate, or we are simulating now, actually, uh, quantum fluids. But, uh, the path integral formalism of Feynman can be implemented in Monte Carlo simulations. The idea is that, for example, instead of having a particle, <coughs> instead of having several particles interacting with a classical interaction, each particle is represented by a ring. This is due to the uncertainty principle, the high the uncertainty principle, that actually a particle could have, uh, you know, you have uh, uncertainty in the positions and the velocities of, of the particles. So at the end, you can work out the statistical mechanics of particles in the quantum regime, uh, describing as a system of n particles as a system of n ring particles. And you can do this in, in computer simulation. So Cesar Serna is a student that he has been working, for example, uh, quantum high spheres. Uh, because we want to do perturbation theory, but then now the perturbation system, or the, the reference system, sorry, is a fluid of quantum half spheres in order to induce a quantum effect there. So in order to know if we are doing the right things, when then we need to, to have the modeling of quantum half spheres. So here are the, the snapshots of computer simulations done for these systems. You, you see here the spheres with different colors. What we are doing, maybe you can see it here, is that each particle is represented by several particles. Uh, different colors represent uh, different particles in this, in this scheme. You have one particle that is represented by all these particles. And actually, these particles can overlap. Okay, They don't exclude volume. Because when you increment the temperature, the distance between these two particles starts to decrease. And then at the end, in the classical regime, all these spheres overlap in only one sphere. So actually, these spheres overlap. But when you have another ring that represents another quantum particle, then each one of the bits in this color uh, interacts with the other ring. Okay? So for example, this one is going to interact with another bit in the ring, but only with that bit. So in this modeling that I'm showing here, this is the, the, the necklace, or the, what in Spanish we say the collar, no? And these are the different perlas, bits, in the, in, the, in, in, in the necklace. And then what we are saying is that the red, the red ball here, they can overlap. And the red ball here interacts only with the red balls, or the red spheres, in the other part, in the other necklace, OK? So this kind of simulation can be implemented. And one of the interesting results, are, well, there are two interesting results. One is that this is a calculation of the radial distribution function that gives you a probability of finding a particle when you have a particle at this center, at this origin. Then what is the probability of finding another particle at certain distance? So this, this is a statistical property. This is an ensemble average property. And uh, you can obtain it with uh, this procedure. The difference with classical spheres, classical high spheres, is that here you have a strong discontinuity with classical spheres. Whereas for quantum spheres, the transition to the zero region is continuous. So this is one of the, the, 
The most important difference between a, classical, a fluid of classical hard spheres and a fluid of quantum hard spheres. This is one of the differences. The other difference that is very important is, for example, the perturbation theory uh, term, sorry, the perturbation term to the hard spheres free energy. This is uh, related only to attractive energy. You can see here the results. The dashed line corresponds to the classical result. The uh, blue dots correspond to the quantum calculation. You can calculate this by Monte Carlo summation. So you clearly can see here that the quantum effect arising from the nature, the quantum nature of the hard spheres modifies the expression of A1 respect to the classical theory. And since the pressure, the pressure contribution coming from this term goes as a derivative of this intensity, you can see here that the derivative is going to change a lot with respect to the classical behavior. So that changed the phase diagram. So one of the conclusions that we obtained in this work is that actually the quantum effects of hydrogen, and particularly confined hydrogen, are important to take into account. So most of the question states for hydrogen don't take into account this. So if we are talking about absorption of hydrogen or graphene, we have to take into account the quantum nature of hydrogen. That's our main conclusion from this work. Uh, this is part of uh, Cesar PhD thesis now. So what we are doing now? Well, with Eduardo, uh, when Rostro at the IMP, we, we want to model, we still model it, uh, asphalt things now with reacting systems. Eduardo was able, to, and his team, were able to find uh, uh, experimentally, they were able to find uh, an ionic uh, fluid mixture that could control the, the, the absorption or the precipitation of asphalt This is an experimental work. So now, the next problem is, are we able to model this from, from this kind of theories? Well, that's one of the things that we want to do. Uh, in the case of biodiesel, we want to measure calorific properties of Joel uh, Tavares, that is a student from Tavera. From the, Joel Tavares, sorry. Tavera. Sorry? Tavera. Tavera. Sorry. sorry. Joel Tavera uh, Martinez, he's going, to, he's going to go to Colombia uh, to work out this with uh, the Professor Carlos Aviet and to see if we, can, we are able to, to find that, that, that prediction that we are giving of the heat capacity corresponds to what uh, the experiments could, uh, could show. In the case of quantum fluids, well, we need to work out this perturbation theory using uh, path integrals. Sorry, in the last, in the last, in this one, the other line that you see here is the pink line. The pink line is a perturbation theory that we worked with Victor, in his PhD thesis, uh, we work at this perturbation term adding uh, per to, uh, quantum corrections, but using, still using a classical hard spheres uh, reference system. Okay? So as uh, you can see, uh, more or less follows the quantum behavior of the system, but still there are important differences. So what we want to do actually is that is to develop, we want the enchilada completa, no? It's uh, the full Monty. We want the, the, the whole perturbation theory based on the, the, the complete quantum behavior and to see, uh, to develop this. This is part of what we are doing now with CESAR. And the, to use some, to, to still using some in confined systems, this is something that uh, my colleague, Vanderbilt University, Claire McKay, uh, she, has, she has been very interested in this since a long time ago. Uh, so we are planning, in principle in October, where we'll have a meeting to try to see if we can push uh, for one this project uh, to be able to, to work these kind of systems. So, a knowledge mix, well, uh, this work has been uh, financed by Conacyt. There was a project uh, between National Science Foundation and Conacyt with Claire McKay, 
in the case of oil recovery and confined fluids. With Colombia, we have a combined project, Consciences Conacyt. Consciences is like the Conacyt from Colombia in the, this project of 2G biofuels. Now we are working the problem, ah, sorry, it's a mistake here, but the, the thermodynamic of hydrogen is working through a project, uh, uh, internal project of the university. Uh, my students are, have done very excellent work. Felipe and Victor, they came from Colombia, and they're excellent students. Uh, both are fi uh, have finished. Victor is moving now to Vanderbilt to do his postdoc. Guadalupe Jimenez, uh, most of you have known her because she, she did his bachelor and his PhD uh, students here at this year. And now he is in, in England working in a project of asphalt teams. They, they have another approach. Uh, this is a very interesting approach between Russia and, and England. And, uh, Guadalupe, with her experience on this kind of things, she is now working on that. Martin, that he, he finished his PhD and now he's in San Luis, Alejandro Martinez, that most of you maybe know him, he works now at this year. Uh, Mario finished his, his bachelor thesis and now he's in CIMAT. And Cesar Serna, that he, he's doing all these computer simulations with the patent that formally, that he's doing his PhD. And my colleagues, uh, Gerardo Gutierrez, he's helping us a lot on the experimental uh, uh, approach to the problem of biofuels. Uh, uh, we are interested on, on, the, uh, on the measurement of sound. Uh, Susana, that uh, we have been, she has been very helpful on, 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 on the, this issue of hydrogen because she has worked hydrogen confinement, and so she has been very helpful on, on very useful, very useful information that she has given. She, she has given to us. Eduardo, that is at the IMP, Clara Vanderbilt, and Carlos Javier at Colombia. And with that. Thank you. Equation state, it's an experimental equation state, it's an equation state 
fitted to experimental data coming from NASA. So we compared with that equation state, and we were able to reproduce under the same conditions the predictions obtained by this equation state that uh, NASA uh, developed. So in that sense, we are uh, confident that we have a good model, and that model can be extended. We are sure about that. Uh, Felipe, in, in, during his postdoc, he extended the model uh, using a more robust version of SAFT. So, in general, we could say that uh, the model is working, and now that transition to develop uh, in giants and things like that is something that you need the experts of the other side. Okay? We are not the experts on that side, we need the experts on that side. Uh, but I am confident that this could be done. What we wanted to do here, and uh, it's something that we have with Gerard and other colleagues in this area uh, uh, talking about this, is that to be confident that some measurements, like the measurement of the velocity of sound, could be done uh, and compared with these results. And this is where we are moving. Okay? So part of the question I cannot answer is because yeah. we need the experts of designing or the design of the, the, the construction of, 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 of models. Okay? Yeah. But in principle, we have the input to, to <coughs> like in the case of the astronauts, they, they have all the they had all the experience, the experience from the experimental side, and by what they needed was the molecular model. And actually, the, the molecular model worked very well, and that's why Eduardo, could, he, he has done a lot of things, very interesting things to laugh at. Any other question? How much, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the, the computing. Do you have a future? Well, in the statistical mechanics group, we we have a good computing. Uh, you know, uh, we are modest. We don't have you know uh, high performance computers. But most of these studies can can be done with the standard computers, uh, workstations that we have. Uh, when we have required uh, uh, strong, you know, uh, uh, robust uh, computers, then we have applied to. Different services. So, for example, uh, the studies done for asphalt teams, the molecular simulation of asphalt teams, uh, we applied to NAM. Mm -hmm. And we, the NAM, uh, uh, we set a project and then they, they allow us to use uh, the facilities, their facilities. Okay? Right. Uh, we renewed this, this proposal like two or three years, and that's why uh, NISA was able to do these simulations. Okay? At some moment, we had a cluster, and we worked on that. And I know that you have here very really good clusters, but from time to time I have told that now. <laughs> Please, <laughs> maybe I, can you help me with the, the simulations? And I think that always has been very keen to do it. We, we haven't done it, but actually, in, in the case of requiring you know, uh, uh, strong computing, uh, we, 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 we have had no problem. 